Welcome back. Today I'm going to be replacing the hydraulic pressure feed line from the hydraulic pump to the rear axle of this Ford 3000 tractor and more importantly the fitting that actually threads into the rear end of this tractor. Normally this is not a wear item. Uh, the fitting that threads in, the compression style fitting, was cross-threaded into this larger nut on this particular tractor, and there's no way to get it to stop leaking after that happens. Now, these lines do get chewed up over time from the, uh, in my opinion, pretty poorly designed compression fitting setup that they have on them. So, so in this case, the line itself, the end where the compression fitting clamps onto is a little bit chewed up and I don't think I'm going to get a good seal on that. And this nut itself is actually screwed up. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on changing this fitting and line on this Ford 3000. Alright, here's the hydraulic pump on the left side of the tractor. This large line up in here is the suction or feed line. And the smaller line is the pressure line. Now the factory fitting on this is a one inch and uh, this one does have some kind of hacked together power steering stuff that your tractor probably won't have in the way and also a loader that yours may or may not have in the way. But once I break that loose, once it's broke loose it should actually turn quite easily. Like this one is broke loose now. And it may even, no, not quite by hand. But I'm starting up here on the top so that the fluid will actually drain down into the drain pan when I get to that part. Now one other thing to note, there is a there is a heat shield that's missing on this tractor right now. Uh, I plan to put it back on, but for right now it's it's not. Uh, I still want to get into the valve cover area on it. I don't think that would affect any of the clearance here, but it's been quite a while since I've taken it off, so it may. All right, so there's the. The nut on this side is now loose. The tube slides freely. You probably can't really see that. But the compression nut is out and we'll move around to the other side. I'm now looking through the footwell on the right side of the tractor. The control valve or the speed control valve is right there. Straight down from that, you can see the nut um, two fittings that we're going to go after. I'm going to try to loosen the line out of the bigger nut first. It's cross-threaded in there pretty good. I'm not sure how well that's actually going to work, um, but I'm going to give that a try. This maybe shouldn't be the next step. I, I'm honestly going to create kind of a fluid leak that might be annoying underneath, but I'll deal with that later. And that nut is now off. You may be able to hear the fluid draining into the pan below. And now it's time to get under the tractor. Now under the tractor, what I need to do is remove these brake levers. Now, I think this is in frame for you. There is a linkage that runs from the right side brake lever that has a 
cotter pin in it. Remove that cotter pin, slide the pin itself out, and the linkage is now disconnected. I'm just gonna set those back together, set them kind of off to the side. Now, I really think there's supposed to be a, a large E-clip in here, but there's not on this tractor. Um, so the next step is gonna be, so the next step is gonna be removing this spring. I have some needle nose vice grips that I tend to use for spring work. So I'm gonna grab onto this spring I'm gonna hold up on the brake, pull it down and release this spring. And I'm just gonna set it off to the side as well. Now if yours has a clip here, you may have to remove that to slide this out. But this one slides right off. Set it up out of the way. The other side has a pinch bolt. So there's this bolt here, and then this shaft is keyed and goes through the tractor. So we're going to, and I have the wrong size. So I'm going to loosen up this pinch bolt, which is a 5 8 And that's it, it just needs to be loosened. I am again going to use my needle nose spring tool, set that spring off to the side as well. And then this, this one is a little bit more difficult to work off of here, but same deal, it will. And I'll just pull that out, I don't think it should matter, sometimes it does, I don't think it does on this one. Just work that off. Set it off to the side as well. Now we do have an E-clip on the parking brake. We do have an E-clip on the parking brake. So I usually use a flathead screwdriver. I use a flathead screwdriver, get up into one of the notches and kind of work it off that way. Never use a screwdriver as a pry bar. We've then got a washer and the parking brake assembly, which I'm not gonna remove. I'm just gonna turn it up and move it in a way like it would be engaged. So it'll hold up out of the way. There is a washer on the back side of that as well. Now this bracket actually needs to come off. So it is, um, it's got two bolts. One of them is a 11 16th, or it's got a through bolt with a nut on the other side. So it's got an 11 16th nut and a 5 8 head on the bolt itself. And this one is actually spinning out of here without moving the bolt. Okay, so that bracket's still not loose. I'm not gonna move the camera, but there is another nut and bolt assembly above the floorboard that you also have to remove the nut from in order to get that bracket off. And that bracket is currently holding the line. Once the nut and bolt on the top side is removed, this can slide out and it's now out of our way. And the line now comes loose here and we've got to move up to the front where we've got this 9 16 bolt on a bracket here. And the 
line is now loose, so I'm gonna let it drip for a few minutes. The pressure line is now loose. On this particular tractor, I've got a lot of stuff in the way. Um, which is gonna make it less fun. But I'm gonna have to snake that out of there now. Now I did this with the camera off. Uh, I just kinda got in the zone and was messing around with it trying to figure out how it came out of there. But what I've done is I've got the steering turned hard left. And that pulled our steering arm back. I then disconnected the power steering, which honestly I think is routed a little bit better if it's still factory. Um, I don't really know. This one has been routed this way since, well, since New Holland and Ford merged because the steering gear actually came from England. This is an American tractor, but that's an English steering gear. It took like months to get. Um, don't ask me why I remember that. I was pretty young when all that happened. But anyway, when they did that, they screwed up the lines or did this to them. So they got out of the way pretty easily, which actually turned out to be kind of nice for this. If yours, you may have to disconnect them in a different spot. I'm not really sure what they are factory. But anyway, the factory line is now out. Now I'm fairly certain that this is a standard size, not metric but I don't have a standard size that fits this. However, 35 millimeter fits very well. Just gonna go ahead and pop that out. Make sure everything is nice and clean. Take your new one, thread it in by hand. Make sure it threads in nice by hand. And I need to look up the torque spec on that. No, I, I just looked through my service manual and I cannot find the torque spec for this particular fastener. So I'm just going to get my nice long snap-on ratchet out and go with the old German torque spec Guten type. Alright, so that's good and tight. Now it's time to put the line back in. I'm just going to kind of set you off to the side on that and uh, I'll try to finagle it up into place. I've hit the point here where uh, this is about as long of a video as I've been able to successfully upload to YouTube. So this will end up being multiple videos. So I'll set this up with probably a little bit of extra dead, dead air at the end so you'll be able to have time to click on the next step. So if you want to see the rest of it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.